Good evening, folks. My name's Terry Roach, and this is Serious Automotive Training. Tonight, we're going to continue on with the modules that we've previously learned to get through Publication 45, Subchapter A, Definitions. Why is it important? Well, it's important to me to fulfill the requirements for the students, the technicians, or the facility owners, the ability to pass the recertification test for the Pennsylvania Motor Vehicle Safety Inspections. Today we're going to talk about weight, vehicle weight. What's important to remember in Pennsylvania, weight is money. So we're going to use publication 194. This is a great reference. It's a free book. Go to any truck stop. Pennsylvania Trucker's Manual. Very good book. So let's start looking at publication 45 to get us into some of the definitions we're going to use for weights today. Right off the bat, we're going to look at our registration fees. Look at the column, gross weight. Let's look at our first definition, gross weight. When we talk about vehicle gross weight, we're talking about the weight on the scale of the vehicle minus the driver. So think about that for a minute. There's some pretty big drivers out there. I had a roommate in college. He was 360 pounds, played for Chicago Bears. He's all the way from St. Mary's, PA. Big boy. So when you talk about gross weight minus the driver, you're getting into some issues here. So let's start out with a 3500 series truck. The gross weight minus the driver of that brand new 3500 series truck puts us around... 8,000 pounds, okay? So if we look at our registration fees in Pennsylvania, an 8,000 pound truck is a class three. What's important to remember in Pennsylvania, we have 25 classes of weight. More weight, more money. More classes, more money. So if you have a vehicle that weighs 8,000 pounds. This vehicle needs to be registered as a class three truck. We're talking about trucks, not passenger cars. Just trucks. So first definition, gross weight minus the driver. We're just going to stick with the definitions for now. Let's go right up to the top and look at registered gross weight. Pennsylvania, the registration fee schedule, 8,000 pound truck. It fits in the middle here. It's going to be registered between seven and 9,000 pounds. That's going to be the gross vehicle weight rating. Excuse me, the registered gross weight. <laughs> so that's what's going to cost you. What's important to remember here is with a class three truck sticker for the inspection, this will be on the registration for the vehicle. The vehicle does not have to display the weight class sticker for the inspection. It should be common practice to let the customer know that the sticker is not on the windshield for whatever reason or they never received it. But for the inspection procedure, it does not have to be on the windshield. We do not fail for that. So real important stuff here. Let's continue up to the next one, the gross combination weight rating. Matter of fact, let's go one more up. Let's go with the gross vehicle weight rating. That's the rating of the maximum weight that the manufacturer puts on the manufacturer label inside the door or somewhere on the vehicle. So that's the max that the manufacturer allows that vehicle to support. We drop down and we go to the gross combination weight rating. So the combination weight rating is exactly what it says. It's the gross weight plus the combinations of vehicles attached to that. So big difference between the two. We go back up to the top here. We're going to talk about gross vehicle weight rating one more time. In Pennsylvania, if the gross vehicle weight rating of a vehicle, car or truck, is under 9,000 pounds, so 9,000 and under, it is part of the emission inspection program. 9,001 it's, that vehicle will not fall into an emissions program. This is for the 25 counties 
that have the emissions program. Okay, that's very important. We'll get to that further down the road when we talk about subject vehicles, the difference between subject vehicles and non-subject vehicles. Let's continue on. Let's jump into some easy ones here. NFPA. NFPA is the National Fire Fighter Fire Association Protection Association. This is important to the emergency vehicle technician. I'm an EVT certified technician. If for whatever reason you need that EVT cert, or if you're inspecting an emergency vehicle, a fire truck, it'll get into situations where it has you refer to NFPA. NFPA 1911 is the publication that will allow you to inspect a vehicle, whether it be for maintenance or performance of the fire apparatus using that manual. So NFPA is one of the definitions. Next one, National Highway Transportation Association Administration. Uh, we should all be familiar with that by now. Another one we're going to talk, talk about real quick, a vintage plate. Now, we covered collectible plates. We covered antique plates, which is also antique and collectible registration in Pennsylvania. But what's important to remember is a vintage plate is a plate in Pennsylvania that is from the years of 1906 to 1976. A vintage plate is a plate, a vintage so a 1958 Chevrolet has a 1958 license plate from Pennsylvania. The state will allow you to register that vehicle using that vintage plate. So it has to fall within the years. You'll have to send a plate to the state. They're going to scan it and do some funny things to it. But they'll allow that plate to be registered to that vehicle. So real important, collectible, antique and vintage. These are titling with registration. Uh, we talked about title uh, publication 194. We talked about the weight classes. Let's uh, cap off on one more thing here before we call it a night on our definitions. And I always like to follow up with some motor vehicle forms or some type of fact sheet when we do our, our modules. So let's talk about Motor Vehicle 401. This is the form for the safety inspection mechanic to remove a category. So where would you use this? This is critical. Let's say that you work at a dealership and you inspect trucks. And now you no longer have... Well, let's back up one more. Let's make it more realistic. Let's say you work at a station and you inspect cars, class one, and you inspect bikes, class two, code two. Now you no longer have a motorcycle license. Well, by law, when the quality assurance officer comes into the station, he needs to see your driver's license and your inspection card, and it has to be readily available. I worked in Wilkesboro. We had 116 technicians in the shop. When the quality assurance person came through the shop, in a matter of a half an hour, he needed to see every single person's cards. No question. They weren't out. We had problems. So they have to be with you all the time on your person, in the toolbox, in your person, readily available. So in this case, if you happen to drop your motorcycle license or cancel it for whatever reason, you need to remove that from your inspection mechanic card. So this is the form. So if you want to remove a code, MV401 will allow you to mail it in. You remove the code. Real important. You don't want to get hung up with, with something like that. One more form we're going to touch on, and we will call it an evening from down here in beautiful Adams County. Uh, I do have one more form I wanted to talk about. Here we go. In Pennsylvania, the safety inspection mechanic may have a physical disability. For whatever reason, I think I worked with a few who were unable to perform the road test portion of the inspection. Normally every mechanic who does the inspection is also the mechanic required to do the inspection, the, the road test. If not, 
you have the ability to submit this form, the MV403, down to PennDOT with the doctor's information where they will allow you to be exempt from performing the road test, just for the mechanic. So, to finish up, we talked about weight tonight. Weight is money. We talked about gross weight. We talked about registered gross weight. We talked about gross vehicle weight rating. We talked about gross combination weight rating. And we touched on some, uh, some different uh, definitions here. We talked about our chart, the registration fees and publication 194. And last but not least, we're going to define combination weight, okay? Now, we already talked about the combination weight rating. It's the weight of both, the towing vehicle, and whatever is being towed behind it, whether it be one, two, okay? So, let me read the definition, and then we'll get to the skinny part here. A combination registration is required for a towing vehicle when the trailer is registered in excess of 10,000 pounds. So, that's a class three trailer. Everybody's seen class three trailer hitches, so it's pulling a class three. So it's 10,001 pound and over for the trailer. And the cumulative weight of both vehicles exceeds the registered weight of the towing vehicle. So, real simple, we go back to the registration chart, 3,500 series truck, weighs 8,000 pounds, you pull a 10,000 pound trailer, is it going to go over the gross weight of nine? <laughs> By a fortune, okay? So it's real critical that it, you register for your own personal vehicle a, uh, a trailer and a truck as a combination weight. If you get stopped, the fines are crazy. That's for the definition. As far as the technician, Hopefully, the person bringing the vehicle to you has this capacity in their towing vehicle to tow the trailer. Because when you inspect a, a trailer, you're going to have to perform a road test. Now, if you're using your own vehicle, don't forget you're exempt on the laws for the road test. The inspection mechanic is. So there's a kind of a fine line here. You have to be safe. So if you have a car that the trailer hitch on, and you say, well, I'm gonna use my car or my station wagon to pull this trailer to do the road test, you're really unsafe. Now, for the customer, if he has a, a one-ton truck and he's pulling a very large trailer, is it gonna support the weight? Well, of course it's gonna support the weight. Is it registered gross combination weight? No, he doesn't have a registered gross combination weight. Should you tell him? Of course you should tell him. Should you fail him for inspection? Absolutely not. That's up to him. You're inspecting it by the inspection procedure. There's nothing in it that says you need to verify that the vehicle is registered as a combination weight rating. Again, weight's money in Pennsylvania. So for you, it's also safety. Safety's money too. So I hope you enjoyed another night of definitions. We'll probably have a few more modules of definitions before we get into subchapter B, which again, which is more penalties and more money in Pennsylvania. So for all of us, I'm Terry. This is Serious Automotive Training, and have a wonderful night.